The names of two Massachusetts criminals have made national news in the past week. Boston mobster James Whitey Bulger and West Springfield native Fodios Freddy Gius. Both had been in prison for years on unrelated charges, but Bulger was killed shortly after being transferred to U.S. Prison Hazleton in West Virginia, where Gius is also being held. Some news outlets, including the Boston Globe and the Springfield Republican, have reported that Gius is suspected to be among those who murdered Bolger. Jim Polito, now of WHYN Radio, was an investigative reporter who covered organized crime in Springfield during the early 2000s. Here's his take on Gius. I knew that Freddie and his brother Ty were the henchmen, were the muscle for Anthony Arellata. And Can the two brothers from West Springfield? Yeah, they're from West Springfield. And they're probably Freddie is the more was the more well known and probably the more brutal of the two. But they were both heavies, hit men. They were the muscle for Anthony Arellata, whose mob name was Bingy. He was and also he didn't like to be called it the little guy. Yeah. He was smaller of stature. And Anthony Arellata was a rising star. Big Al Bruno was the head of the Genovese crime family in Western Mass, the crew of Genovese. And I think that's something people find fascinating. That Because you have a long-standing connection oh, in, here in Springfield, right? Right in Springfield. There are five organized crime mafia families in New York City, and the Genovese family is kind of the... Cadillac of all those families. They're, they're a shadow of what they were before, but Genovese is probably the strongest. And they always, this was their territory on this side of the river in Springfield. So you were covering this in the early 2000s when there was a lot of things really going on around oh, yeah. organized crime here in the city of Springfield. Yeah. And Freddie Gias is currently serving a life sentence for, among other things, his connection to the Al Bruno murder, right? To the Al Bruno murder. He didn't commit it. He committed the Gary Westerman murder. But he paid the guy who did. He paid Frankie Roach, who was kind of a, you know, a, 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 not a drifter, but kind of a low-level crime drug person. And uh, Freddie arranged for him to do the killing rights outside the Our Lady of Mount Carmel Club on a Sunday night. I think it was the 23rd of November. We're coming up on the anniversary. Yeah, back in 2003, 2003. right? 2003. So now we're hearing about Freddie Gius again in the news yeah. in connection allegedly to the death of Whitey Bulger, yeah. who both were in prison when this happened. But the two crime circles didn't overlap, right? Bulger's in Boston. Yeah. And what Gius was Freddy doing out here, here in Springfield. So why connect the two? It's just incredible. I mean, really, it's, you know, the old truth is stranger than fiction. Mm. So you, everybody, I think, knows the story of Whitey and how he was an informant. So Freddie Gius is out here, and he's tight with Anthony Arellata, who's a rising star. Kind of the protege of Big Al Bruno. Well, Anthony Arellata, as the story goes, was ambitious. He went to New York, and the story is he got to sit down with the New York family and said, Big Al isn't kicking up the tribute that he should be kicking up back to New York City. Meaning the money, right? The money, right. It, it works like a pyramid scheme, the mob. And Anthony Arellata was what was known as a, a great earner. He, he was smart, and he was a good earner. And he convinced them that he should be the boss here, and the Big Al had to go. And he got the okay from New York. Freddie arranged it, Frankie Roach did it, and Big Al was dead, and Anthony Arellata became a made man in a ceremony in New York City, and he became head of the Genovese crime family crew in Western Mass. And the reason, part of the reason that Freddie Gius ends up in prison is because Arellata oh. eventually turns on him, right? And, and this, yeah. And is this the connection to possibly to Bulger? Because as you said, Bulger was an informant yep. and Freddie Gius did not like informants, right? No, absolutely. And because Freddie was loyal to Anthony Arellata. When they all got indicted, Arellata said, I'll take a deal with the feds. And he gave evidence that... Um, Freddie masterminded the murder of Bruno, that Freddie helped to kill Gary Westerman, who was a, another low-level guy who was um, dating, I believe, Arellata's wife's sister and was supplying her with drugs. This came out in the trial and things, and he wanted him out of the picture. And they did it, and they buried him 
in, in Agawam. You broke the story of West Jordan, I broke right? the story of that because I found out that his car had been discovered in a supermarket parking lot in West Springfield. The state police had it. It was covered with dust to dust for fingerprints. Nobody knew where Gary was, and everybody knew it had something to do with the mob. And that was the focus of all organized crime investigation, and then boom, a few weeks later, Al Bruno's murdered. Well, Aralata turns on Freddie, and Freddie is going to spend the rest of his life in jail, well, was prior to this, and he hates rats. And what I learned about Freddie when I was reporting on him, Freddie had kind of a strange upbringing. Um, he was separate, Freddie and Ty were separated from their parents. And I'm not a psychologist, but that's often the MO of those in organized crime and in gangs. They're looking for a family. They find a family structure and they're incredibly loyal. And of course, Freddie being Greek could never be a made member of the mafia, um, but he could be a mob associate and a mob um, hitman. And he believed in all of the rules of the omerta, your oath and loyalty. So he firmly believed that he had a chance to flip. He didn't do it. That he could have flipped and gone flipped on to Anthony, but he didn't. He hates rats. You think about it, he's spending his entire life in jail because he was ratted out. And then couple that with when he was awaiting trial, he was up in Shirley um, at that prison. And he met a man by the name of, I think it's Fred Weichel. Fred Weichel was behind bars because Whitey put him behind bars for a murder he didn't commit. Whitey ratted him to his contacts in the FBI. That guy had been behind bars. So Freddie meets him. And Freddie likes being a mob mobsters. He wasn't a poser in the sense of, oh, he liked the lifestyle. No, he bought into it. And as I said, there was some dysfunction when he was younger. He and his brother weren't with the family for a period, lived with others, and I, I don't know if it was because of immigration issues, or I can't remember. So Freddie meets up with him, finds out about what happened to him, because Whitey the Rat did it, and then like a gift, Whitey is presented on his front door. And again, this is alleged that he com committed the murder. All of, of, all of, of this is, and none this of point. this has been confirmed. The Bureau of Prisons, quote, is still doing the investigation. This is all based on reporting and from other sources. But, but what would, at this point, he's serving a life sentence, Freddie Gias is serving a life sentence in prison. What would he stand to gain if he did commit this murder? And that fits in with, it's a very good question. It fits in with everything I know about Freddie, being a true believer in the code amongst thieves. He's, he killed the king of rats if he didn't commit this. He killed the king of rats. That makes him king of whatever prison he goes to among the, the honor of the criminals. You know, he, he then gains that stature. One, I'm sure it was him, because I feel he is somewhat of a sociopath, acting out that anger at being ratted out on. And then two, it gives him stature. He knows he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life. He's the man who killed the most well-known rat of, of all time, Whitey Bulger. In the time that you were covering this very actively, did you ever feel personally threatened? I mean, you talk about you know, the brutal nature of some of the things that you were covering at the time. I mean, I, was, I, I took measures to protect myself. Meaning? I did carry a weapon and, um, because there were certain threats, and I would get them through certain channels. I was never really completely concerned because Freddie Gius was not stupid, but not as smart as Whitey. And he knew that if he did something to a reporter, it would bring attention to them. And so Freddie, Anthony Arrelata, I'm sure they wanted to intimidate me and they did certain things and said certain things to people that I knew would get back to me to intimidate me. And I'm in no way saying I'm brave. I just know that the way that they conducted business they probably wouldn't have done anything because it would have brought more attention on them. And the last thing that they want in that lifestyle is attention brought on them.